Hello and welcome to Frost Over the World. Later in the program, the award-winning, record-breaking pop sensation James Blunt, the man who gave us your beautiful. A Yemeni analyst on terrorism and on failed states, both of those, and a look at a momentous election result for the Americas this week. The South Americas, Brazil in fact. But first of all, the country in the headlines today, Indonesia. At least 50 people have been killed in the latest eruption of Indonesia's Mount Merapi volcano. And uh, that's just a week after it first became active. And the country was also hit by a tsunami. This all comes just days before the country welcomes back its most famous former resident, President Barack Obama. So how is the country coping? Joining me now from Jakarta is Indonesia's Foreign Minister, Marty Nataligawa. The first question has to be about the latest news, the situation um, in connection with the volcano. How is, this, how is the situation now at this moment? Well, as you are probably aware, uh, the eruptions are still happening. It's uh, not uh, too good, to be honest, in terms of the natural situation. Uh, but at the same time, the government is reinforcing uh, its uh, efforts in evacuating uh, people from the vicinity of the mountain itself. We have widened uh, the, the, uh, the area where people are supposed to evacuate from. So we are doing our level best uh, to, to ensure that, uh, above all, uh, people are able to, to save themselves and not to become victims of this most uh, difficult circumstance. Right, and are there plans, are there plans to evac evacuate Jogjakarta? Uh, not, not as far as Jogjakarta at the moment. I think, as I understand it, the, uh, the radius is about 20 kilometers from the actual mountain itself, uh, which, which still exempts uh, Jogjakarta proper. Uh, of course, at the same time, we are mindful of how this will, will further develop, and our president is very much hands-on and engaged uh, in the uh, efforts to evacuate uh, people who've been living in the in the mountain area. So, but uh, we'll do. Our, we are doing our level best, and we are very grateful for the uh, tremendous amount of uh, concern and, and and sympathy that many have expressed with regard to the situation. Is there any help that you need, uh, or have you got everything to cope with the situation, the emergency now? Yes, I think we are, we are, we are just about all right with respect to the um, immediate emergency situation. Uh, there's been uh, offers from, from many friends uh, around the world, but the emergency phase that we are encountering is still within uh, our capacity to deal with, uh, you know, based on pa Indonesia's past uh, record. I think when you recall the tsunami that we had back in 2004, uh, we do know when we need to invoke international assistance. But as of now, we are able to, to address the matter within our national means. Is it in fact possible to predict how long uh, the mountain will go on with the volcanoes? I mean, can you say the, the, the explosion, the, everything is going to go on for another week or two weeks or is it impossible to tell how long no, it will go on? I'm afraid not. Uh, we, mu we must, uh, you know, hope for the best but prepare for the worst and, and uh, the government, is, as I said, as I said, is, you know, doing its best to, to address the emergency situation uh, and, uh, but we can't tell how long this is going to take. It, it does uh, inject a sense of humility to all of us, I think, in terms of the force of nature. But uh, this is the reality of Indonesia. We have, uh, as you know, Indonesia is probably the most uh, densely, uh, has the most number of volcanic mountains uh, of, all, of all nations on Earth. And uh, so we must learn to live with this risk uh, and try to mitigate and manage uh, when, when disasters of this type occur. Right, and of course, this is a busy time in any case with the uh, arrival of uh, President Obama. Um, in fact, he spent four years, basically, didn't he, in, uh, in your country um, between the ages of about six and ten. Um, and you're about the same age as uh, President Obama. What, what differences will he immediately see when he returns to Indonesia? What's changed well, dramatically? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I'm, I'm glad that the, you posed the question in that manner, uh, so for David Frost, because uh, exactly it's that quality of change that in, in Indonesia that we wish to project and impress upon President Obama, uh, because over the last 10 years especially, Indonesia has transformed from what was then a, an authoritarian, basically a dictatorship, to what is now uh, a, the third world's third largest uh, democracy. So we have a very thriving and a very vibrant democracy, and uh, at the same time, our economy has also uh, shown greater potential. Ten years ago, we were being rescued by the uh, IMF through its intervention, and today we are a member of the G20 group of nations. So not only in the political area, but in the economic area as well, we have transformed ourselves uh, for the better, and that is the kind of uh, in, uh, projection of our the message that we wish to impress upon our uh, uh, the president President Obama when he arrives in Indonesia next week. And I mean, one of the things he's doing, isn't it, is he's visiting, in fact, Jakarta's largest mosque and so on. Do you think that he's had a a strong enough, big enough impact on the Muslim world? I mean, that speech in Egypt, the world thought that was fantastic, but then. Since then, the, the, the impetus seems to have been slightly lost. Do you think he's doing all he can to build, build bridges between the Muslim world and, and the United States? Well, uh, President Obama has been a very eloquent uh, proponent of uh, building bridges between the so-called um, Islamic world or Muslim world with, with the Western world, uh, as has been our president. Uh, president Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono has spoken as well of the need to engage and to communicate better. But this is uh, not a sprint. It, it is uh, going to be a long, constant effort uh, to try to build bridges and uh, especially uh, to have to ensure that the voice of moderations uh, speak up because moderation and uh, extremism uh, exists not only within one faith, but it can be found in, in all the faiths, basically. So uh, to have the president of the United States here in Indonesia, he can see for himself uh, Indonesia, a country that is at one time uh, all democratic, uh, Muslim majority population, the worst Muslim, uh, largest number of Muslims as well, and, as, and also a, a country that is supportive of uh, modernity as well. So Islam, democracy, and modernity can uh, go hand in hand as in Indonesia. What about Myanmar at the moment? Is there anything more that can be done? You've spoken to colleague nations and so on recently. Is there anything more that can be done about Myanmar? And will the elections have any meaning at all on, with 25% reserved for the military and so on? Will it, will it have any real credibility? Or do you say, well, better than no elections, even a flawed election is better than no elections? Well, uh, from what's uh, been happening in, in the lead up to the election on Sunday, obviously we are seeing, unfortunately, uh, like a trust deficit or democratic deficit. Uh, there are uh, shortcomings in, in, in the way the elections has been prepared. But at the same time, uh, we do want to also accentuate uh, the possibility the election promises uh, in terms of bringing about change uh, in Myanmar. Uh, I do recall, for example, in Indonesia, when we, first, we, when we had our first election in 1999, after the uh, fall of the authoritarian government, uh, it wasn't a perfect election by any means. And even then, we still had our armed forces sitting in parliament. But over time, gradually, uh, we transform and strengthen our democracies, and, and uh, we are where we are today, far more democratic than ever before. So we hope that the elections in Myanmar, while it's going to be, uh, like I said, less than perfect, it, it will offer some possibility of change. Above all, it's important um, not only the election, but we need to see the release of political prisoners. We need to see the release of Dao Aung San Suu Kyi, so that after the elections, we can uh, hope for some kind of a national reconciliation, a national dialogue among all uh, elements in Myanmar's uh, body politics. And, and do you think uh, the Burmese will go ahead and release the leader in the way that they've said they would? Well, you know, with, with Myanmar, you, you can never tell, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, our understanding is that the uh, <laughs> our understanding is that the uh, the sentence against uh, Daung San Suu Kyi will expire this month, uh, and hence there should be uh, no reason for her to continue to be to be uh, you know held 
in prison as she is, uh, home, uh, albeit uh, at her home. But you know, we wish to see her release and contribute to be part of the solution in Myanmar. And uh, I, we hope that the election on Sunday will provide that uh, conditions conducive for national dialogue to take place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. A man with a hectic day in store today, throughout today and tomorrow, they're the Foreign Minister of Indonesia. In a moment, we'll be hearing from Yemen a week after those cargo bombs were posted from that country. The follow-up on that after this short break.